every so often you just need to like list your achievements to remind yourself you've achieved a lot too. Hey what's up it's Keshvi, thank you for coming back or welcome if it's your first time. Um, today I'm going to be talking about climbing a mountain. <laughs> Before I do that give this video a big thumbs up and give me a comment and subscribe. You're gonna get more content. You're gonna get more content from me. If you haven't watched my first two parts to this series, go check them out. I'm gonna be putting cards up here for you guys to go look at uh, and then come back to this video and watch this too. All right, let's get into it. So today we're gonna be talking about something that I'm super proud of myself for doing. It is climbing Mount Kinabalu. That's what like I feel needs to happen every time I tell someone that I climbed a mountain. So this is actually something that I didn't even think about doing um, before I got to Borneo. Uh, it wasn't something that I ever thought I wanted to do but ever since I've done it I have done a lot of other treks as well. It was kind of the, I guess the start of my like I'm not gonna say love because can I be honest I don't love walking long distances like it's not something that I love doing um but it was the start of so here's a little bit about the trail itself we started at Timfohan gate and we followed that blue trail we followed that all the way to the top we stopped it for most of these um, shelters because those are our checkpoints. And then we stayed at Laban Rata Rest House and then we, the next day we carried on following that blue trail. Um, all the way up. To so I actually did write a diary um, during my time in Borneo which is where I'm getting so much like detail from because I actually don't remember a lot of it because it was in 2014 which was six years ago now oh my god I feel really old. Um, so I do remember the trek and I do remember how I felt during the check trek I just don't remember like timings and stuff which is what I'm using my diary for. I did this trek with um, three of the other people that I was volunteering with um, in the camps with Camps International. So I did it with Tom, Fiona, and Re, um, and they was they were all so much fitter than I was, and they definitely walked faster than I did. Um, but they were honestly so great because they were super supportive, even though I was obviously holding them back, and they made sure. Um, that I was okay like every time we got to a checkpoint from the bottom of the mountain to the lodge took us around six hours and that was six kilometers so it took us about like an hour a kilometer so we must have started at around 10 o'clock so this climb a lot of it is actually in the shade um, it's you're not out in the open a lot of it's very like jungle um, rainforest type um, environment um, which is good and bad so it's good because it means that you don't overheat like you get tired but you're never like you're not overheating because you don't get too much sun but it does also mean that it can be very wet I mean I remember at one point um, it absolutely tipping it down with rain we got drenched um, so, and it was cold, uh, like the water was warm but I remember being cold because it was wet. Um, and the higher you got uh, when it rained, the colder it was. So we would stop every kilometer I think it was, which because that's where the checkpoints are. Um, which was great for me because I need a lot of stops when I'm walking. Because um, I complain a lot. <laughs> we arrived at the lodge at around 3.30 and that was half an hour before we were scheduled to arrive there which was really really exciting for me because I thought I was slowing us down quite a lot 
I say here it was like minus two, so I don't know whether it was minus two, but I definitely remember that it felt like minus two. And considering that the last like month and a half before I did this um, trek, I'd been in like 25 degree weather constantly. Like I hadn't experienced cold and in England it hadn't got cold yet because when I left England in September it was still sort of sunny, sort of warm. Um, so that made it even colder. <laughs> um, and I remember how much my knees and my legs were aching and I mean aching like nothing I'd ever experienced before in my life um because I wasn't that fit like I'm still not crazy fit but like I'm, I'm fit than I was on the plus side um and the place that we did stay the, the beds are really really comfortable and actually now thinking about it I actually don't know if they were comfortable I think I was just so tired that <laughs> I thought they were comfortable like that could genuinely be like a thing like I could have just been so tired that I thought it was comfortable so we went to sleep real early I remember we ate and then we kind of just like were all super tired so we went to sleep like as soon as it got like dark and um, so the next day uh, we had to get up at around 1 45 a.m. because uh, that's when we need to start the climb so that we could get to the top by sunrise it says in here um, to get to go from the lodge to the top and back down again was like 11 and a half kilometers half of 11 and a half i guess is what i need to do Five point 5.75 five and three quarters <laughs> um yeah so to get to the top from our lodge um, was about 5.75 kilometers and that round so going from the top and back down again took us around six hours I struggled for that first part because it was like basically climbing rocks you had to like pull yourself up and I don't have any upper body strength at all so that was like super difficult and I really struggled and I was tired because it was 1.45 a.m. and we couldn't see anything because obviously it was still dark because the sun hadn't risen um, and I was exhausted from walking the day before. I was like not in a good mindset. Like I literally don't know how I got as far as I did because I felt tired. I felt I wasn't good enough to do this. I was like mentally and physically exhausted. Um, but I kept going. But you get to like a checkpoint where you get to like the tip of the mountain. So you're not at the top, but they give you like a little certificate, which I'm sad that I've lost, but I've lost it, I don't know where it is, um, that says that you like made it to the tip of the mountain. But then from there, it was still like another hour walk. So I was really confused by that point because I was like, oh, I thought this was the top, but it's not the top. It's still like quite far to go before you actually get to the top. And like I got, I was going, I was going, everyone was walking a lot faster than me. I was kind of like slowly going by myself and the guide wasn't sure what to do. He didn't know whether he should go ahead with everyone else or he should stay back with me. So he ended up staying back with me for a bit and then going ahead to join everyone else at the top. Everyone else got all the way to the top and I got to a point where I could see it, like I could see the top of this mountain and I was like, I can make it. And my body was just like, just refused. I actually don't know whether my body just didn't want to go or I got altitude sickness, but I remember just like sitting there and being like, I can't, I can't go any further. I can't make it to the top. I can't believe I have not been able to do this. I've got so far. Um, the fact that I got as far as I did. It really shows me now that maybe I was stronger than I thought I was, but I definitely didn't feel that way at the time. This jumper is so stripy, you can't really like concentrate on anything else. It's like a, it's own optical illusion. I found um, the way back down a lot easier than I did going up. Even though I did injure my knee, um, 
I still find it a lot easier to go down stuff than I do going up. I don't know if that's the same for everybody. If it's not, that's cool too, you know? No judge, actually, I respect people who find it easier to go up things than to go down them. I think that's insane, to be honest. Slowly but surely is my motto, I guess, when I do these things because I can't walk fast like most people do. Uh, which frustrates me at the best of times. I mean, um, I've now done quite a few treks um, and I still really struggle with keeping up with everyone. I'm normally by the end of the trek just proud that I did it. I felt like I let myself down at the time because I wasn't in the right headspace to disappoint myself so everything disappointed me everything that I did that I didn't fully accomplish it didn't matter how far I got uh, like I felt disappointed that I just like wasn't that good at it or like whatever and I think it's so important for us to have these goals and like every so often you just need to like list your achievements to remind yourself you've achieved a lot too just because your life is different to other people's does not make it any less and lastly if you guys do get the opportunity to climb mount kinabalu it is definitely worth doing um it's a great people say it's a great like starter mountain but if this is the only mountain you climb it's still such an achievement so yeah i'm gonna put like links in the description down below for ways um for like companies that do the trek thank you guys so so much for watching i so appreciate it if you like this video give it a big thumbs up and go subscribe so you can get more videos every wednesday um i'm gonna see you next time stay safe stay sane lots of love kishfi